There's been a massive amount of interest in my FinGBT video, so I thought I'd give an update on FinGBT and talk about two more interesting papers in the financial large language model space. If you're interested in how large language models can be applied to finance or time series data in general, or you're interested in how you can use AI for your own financial analysis, I think this video will be extremely interesting to you, especially since some of these papers have come out in the past couple of days from when this video was released. So this is all really cutting edge, new research and technology. Uh, and there are a lot of really interesting ways, probably even that you've thought of that haven't been tested yet or tried yet. Before I get into the video, first starting with an update on FinGBT, I do want to mention my own personal platforms. My company is called Ticker Trends. Ticker Trends is an alternative financial data platform. We offer a data terminal in addition to a full-fledged hedge fund, uh, which we are currently raising capital for. If you are interested in the hedge fund, feel free to check out our website, tickertrends.io slash fund, where you can view our deck in addition to getting in contact with us if you do decide that you are an interested investor and you are someone who meets uh, the different requirements in order to invest in, within the US. Um, also with our Ticker Trends data terminal, we have recently released a new update for mobile data. So this is Android and iOS data on the App Store being daily active users for different apps and app rankings. So this data is super, super cool, really valuable in my opinion um, for things like looking at how different companies are performing based on their app performance. I've found this data to be almost equally as good as something like web traffic data, which is a really big thing to say. Um, this data is super exciting. If you don't know what Ticker Trends is, Ticker Trends is a platform that allows you to look at social and alternative data sources for different companies. So for example, here I'm looking at Costco and I'm looking at the Costco app daily active users. So this can be indicative of how well this company will perform in the future. Um, and I can visualize this data, track large amounts of this data all through the Ticker Trends platform, which if you're interested in this, feel free to reach out to us at tickertrends.io. But first, let's start with FinGBT and some of the updates that their team has come out with. FinGBT, when I first covered it, they had not actually released any of the code in their public repository yet. Here we can see that they've released a couple of models where they've trained these models uh, on some of the data sets which, which they've linked to in their repository. I will leave a link in the description down below to this repository if you're interested in playing around with it for yourself. Um, it looks like so far they have trained FinGBT on different financial analysis, uh, financial Q&A, it looks like primarily financial textual data, um, which is what I would expect FinGBT to be the best at, which is analyzing financial uh, text data, since it is a, a large language model. Um, and it looks like this is what they've been focusing on. So far, uh, with the different models that they've trained, they released some of these benchmarks, which to be honest, I don't entirely know the accuracy of. A lot of these benchmarks can be biased to a certain extent, um, as someone's not going to obviously release benchmarks that make their model look bad. But from these benchmarks, it looks like they've had consistent performance improvements through the different versions of FinGBT. Um, and with their most recent version, it seems to be performing, um, as far as they're displaying it here, better than Bloomberg GBT, which seems to be a very big feat since Bloomberg GBT came out, uh, which was proposedly trained on millions and millions of dollars um, worth of GPUs. So I think this is really interesting and it also falls into another paper that I wanted to talk about, which is data-centric financial large language models. So one thing that people are really using these large language models for, especially when it comes to finance, is interpreting textual data. And that's what I thought was interesting about FinGBT is that's kind of where they decided to focus on. And I think it's because they did find that, for example, with time series or numerical data, these models are just not nearly as strong or applicable for that type of data. Uh, this paper here goes into this a little bit more, and I will leave a link in the description as well to this paper. 
Here they talk about how large language models show promise for natural language tasks, um, but they generally struggle when it comes to complex domains like finance. I think you can see where this is going. They're going to fine tune these models essentially to better understand finance textual data. And this kind of makes sense for these large language models. They're not necessarily going to be focused on any form of finance, finance textual data. It is data that can be a little bit more difficult to comprehend and accurately understand. So I do think that it makes sense to fine tune these models uh, for finance textual data. And as you can expect, they do this through a method of instead of manually labeling the data, they create their own automated system for labeling the data uh, actually through other large language models. So if you're not familiar with how um, fine tuning models works, essentially when you're fine tuning a model, you need to have some data set that you're training that model with. Um, the, lab the label data you can think of as the answer sheet. So if you're trying to teach someone to take a test, let's say before they take the test, you give them five practice tests and answers to those practice tests so that once you give them the actual test, then they have a high probability, a high likelihood of understanding how to complete that test because they've already seen answers to very similar tests before. That's the same thinking of labeled data to fine tune a model. If I can provide it with a bunch of examples of what I want it to be able to do, then over time it will learn to mimic that. And then hopefully it will have better performance whenever it actually analyzes, for example, in this case, finance textual data. So what they were able to do is they created actually an LLM agent, which is just an instance of a large language model running with some other alternative instruction set. And they were able to give this model. So here you can see um, a multitask prompt based fine tuning LLM, which is an agent on the side here where they give it news, event, report, policy, regulation, and then tell it to give a summary interpretation and analysis. And then I assume they have some model in between here, um, which is evaluating this output that the LLM is giving it and then using it to fine tune this primary financial large language model, which has some more data associated with it. So it looks like it has some domain expert knowledge, search engine access um, and domain database. So they probably have some form of uh, training data set um, some knowledge. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how they're getting this one. And then search engine, they combine it into this uh, language model, and then they use a different model to evaluate how this model's doing, and it kind of self-trains itself instead of having to label data manually. So instead of having to say, this is how you analyze this piece of data, it can just basically ask this other large language model if it's, if it's doing that well, um, and then it'll self-train itself. Um, this is a very, very high level um, interpretation or summary of what's going on in this paper. But I think it will be interesting because if you are interested in something like FinGBT um, or the applications of these financial LLMs, this is really the direction that you have to go in, in terms of fine tuning these LLMs for a financial textual context and trying to make it as good as possible at analyzing that financial text, which I think ultimately will be the best use case for this. You might be wondering, well, what about the time series data or nu numerical data? One of the points that I made in my first video on FinGBT is that I felt that numerical data was never going to be the strong point of something like ChatGBT or any of these large language models, um, as it's really not what they're created for. They're created for essentially uh, determining the next letter in a sequence. Um, and that's never going to be necessarily very valuable when it comes to analyzing numerical data, where a lot of the time it can almost show as random. It's not going to do a very good job of being able to interpret if I give it an array of a thousand numerical values and I ask it, what's the trend of these numerical values? Um, most likely, uh, I'm sure there, there may be a paper on this actually that could be interesting to look into, but most likely this would give you a relatively random answer 
as it would have to determine based on the data set that you give it, which let's say it's a bunch of random uh, six character numbers, then that's probably a data set that it hasn't seen before. And it's gonna struggle to determine if that numerical data, let's say is uptrending or not. Um, maybe if you have a model like the uh, GBT vision model, maybe if you give that uh, an image of a chart uptrending, it might be able to determine that better than if you just give ChatGBT uh, an array of numbers. So there are different workarounds like that, but overall numerical data is just not going to be the strong point of these models. So what people have now tried to do is say, well, how, how can we take this idea of numerical analysis and time series data, and how can we apply this to these transformer models? So large language models are based on transformers, um, and so how can we use transformers for time series data? Here we have uh, a little short analysis on a paper, which is called TimeGBT1. If you are interested in reading this full paper, then I will leave it linked in the description down below. But I think that this article here gives a really good summary kind of, of what's happening and what it's able to do. The reason why this is pretty cool is because someone was able to make a generalizable model for time series forecasting. So something where this will do very well is for predicting things that are very standard at being predicted, if that makes sense. So what they did is they took a bunch of this time series data. They took finance data, electricity data, web traffic data, tourism data, retail data, etc. They took all of this data, they put it into their transformer model, and then they were able to get inference from that data, some, some new data that, that comes out from this model. And, and this is all using transformers, the same thing that, you, that large language models, ChatGPT, everything like that, same technology that they use. The goal of this is they want to forecast new time series data. So based on this data that I'm giving you, what are the most likely next 10 or 20 values, something like that. The reason why this is really good for more deterministic data is because if I'm going to train this, this model on, uh, let's say, weather data, um, which I'm not sure they even have listed here, they don't. But if I were to train this model on weather data, then most likely weather data is going to have a lot of very predictable patterns. Uh, for example, if I live in a specific uh, state. So let's say that I live in Colorado and it's December in Colorado and over time the temperature has been dropping. So what are going to be the next 10 values of the temperature um, over the next 10 days? That type of data would be most likely it would be able to predict those next time series values with high accuracy because there are very clear defined trends of how that data is going to perform over time. However, if you then try to use that for something like financial analysis, where you say, Here are, uh, here's the price history of a specific stock over the past five years, what are going to be the next 10 candles? How is this stock going to perform over the next 10 days? The, the values that you get from that would be exceedingly less valuable than the ones that you'd get for that weather forecast that comes out of this model. So in terms of applications for finance, that's where you kind of see these types of things start to struggle. If you're doing some form of forecasting, there, there needs to be more to it than just a pure, uh, you know, throwing in some, some non-deterministic data like price data uh, and then getting some output of, okay, these are gonna be the next 10 values from, from something like time GBT. I think that's really where you're going to start to struggle. The, the cool thing though about time GBT is that you don't only have to give it one value. So I think this is where you can start to see some more interesting applications of this. Um, if I were to feed in to time GBT a target value, which let's say is price over time, and I train it on other types of data, such as here are numerical values of events that have happened. So if this value is zero, then uh, that means that it had 
negative earnings. If this value is one, then that means it had positive earnings. What I can then start to do is I take all of these other data sets that relate to that base data set that I'm trying to forecast and feed that into time GBT. And most likely you are going to get more interesting uh, estimates. Something that I think would be a cool experiment to do would be if my target variable was, let's say, will this stock go up or down? Then I can plot that over time as zero and ones if it does go up or one if it does go down. And then what I could do is I could feed into that model a bunch of additional uh, data sets that relate to that stock. So I have values if it goes, it spikes if it goes up. If it doesn't go up, then it stays at zero. And I feed that in as my target variable. Then as my events, I put in different things like positive or negative earnings, different data sets, um, anything that I think would relate to the price of this stock. And then most likely the output that I'll get, the forecasted value, will have a much higher probability of, of giving me some value in a, in a financial context. Um, that's, that's really what, what I would look for personally if I were to try to apply something like time GBT to, to a financial context. Um, this is an interesting project. It's not an open source model, I believe. Uh, the authors of this paper decided to keep it closed source, and I actually, I, I think they might be charging for access to the model. Um, but nonetheless, this is still something that's really interesting to think about. Um, and I think more so than textual data, this is actual data and analysis from a transformer model that has direct applications in finance that I think are quite easy to think about. Um, anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I will be uploading more financial AI-based research videos in the future, as I think it's something that there's a lot of interest in and not many people who know very much about it. Again, if you're interested in ticker trends, anything that I'm working on personally, um, or the Social Arbitrage Fund, feel free to reach out. My email is admin at navtrading.co. I will leave the links in the description down below to all of the resources relating to ticker trends, and I'll see you in the next video.